On a mixing side, the, the first thing that happens when, when we're asked to mix a song or an album is uh, once the files are here, we, we look through them, we make sure everything is, is working correctly, we have everything we need, we then A-B with the reference mix. And we listen to the reference mix, and if there are any other reference mixes available, uh, we'll ask for them. If there's a demo available, we'll ask for that. Whatever is around for us to listen to. Sometimes I'll receive notes before we start the album uh, explaining what the artist is trying to achieve or what the producer is trying to achieve. Uh, usually we will be furnished with good rough mixes that I will follow. Uh, as far as interpretation or, or how far I take it down the avenue that I would like to take it depends on artist to artist. Nine times out of ten they would like to see or, or have the opportunity to hear what our input would be or my input would be. Sometimes you are, you are specifically told that they just want a, a polished version of what they've sent me. They don't want me to stray very far, but that's quite rare. Sometimes we'll have two or three different mixes of the same song. Sometimes we'll have an album version, uh, and then we'll be asked to make a single radio edit, radio version of it, uh, which will be a little louder, maybe a little bit more upfront, maybe just highlighting the hooks a bit more, maybe editing it down to three and a half minutes. Sometimes the band are here with me, which is great because you have more interaction. Uh, quite often how it would work is I will start an album, maybe uh, work for a couple of weeks on my own and the band will come and we'll listen to where we're, where we're at and they'll make suggestions or change things and then maybe they'll come back on the last day or two and we'll finalise it together. But it means my recalls have to be very fast and so that's an important part of our workflow now is the way we approach outboard equipment and the different ways of recalling very quickly. These days, the starting point is different. In, in um, years ago, when, when uh, we were working with tape, you'd, you'd basically start with drums and then you'd feel around the song and you only generally would have 48 tracks to work with. Uh, these days, some of my songs have uh, 250 tracks or more, you know, it, and, and generally it will come in in a session and you will then adapt the session to how I work, but generally the song is, in, is already in a good shape when you get it. And so it's not a question of starting with drums and everything. You, you'll, you'll tend to get it as a whole and then I'll listen to it and, and find the areas I want to work on first. And sometimes it'll be the vocals and sometimes it'll be drums. Or if the drums are fine, then I'll, I'll leave them for a while, work on guitars and work on strings or whatever other things and then come back to the drums and have a clearer idea of what they need to sound like to, to help the rest of the mix and to help the song. Um, and to help the vocal, which uh, you'll hear a hundred times, is it's all about the emotion and the connection of the vocal. Sometimes you can slightly overcompress a vocal and completely lose the connection with it emotionally and it just doesn't do that thing anymore where you, the, the hairs on, on, on your arms stand up. And, and it can simply because it's overcompressed and because it's not allowed to, to, to have its dynamic. Um, sometimes vocals need to be absolutely battered to get across the, 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 the attitude that it needs. But it's all good fun, to be honest. You know, you can try different things and it's, I suppose you need to try different things quite quickly to see which has the best effect on you as a mixer or or as a producer or as an artist and, and you'll get to know what you like and you don't like. I'm not afraid of trying things and I'm not afraid of people turning around to me and saying, well, we don't like that, that's fine. I'd rather try 10 things and then like four of them rather than not try anything and, and give them back a polished version of what they sent me. I've been doing this long enough now not to get upset if someone doesn't like my guitar sound. It's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. I have more opportunity to change things now than I used to when we were using uh, tape. Um, in those days, there was we couldn't change things too much. We still used amplifiers and guitar pedals and those kind of things to, to try and twist the sound a little. Now it's a lot easier to do it with, with plugins and, and um, there are so many different analog circuits now available for us to, to mess with sound. We, we tend to do quite a lot of reamping, uh, not particularly to change the tone of things, but just to give things a bit of depth. A lot of the time it's better for me to work with the DI bass, listen to the bass that they've achieved or the sound they've achieved with the bass through their amplifier and then see if I can improve on that. Uh, not necessarily change the tone, but maybe I'll record, I'll reamp it in four or five different tones and then use those in different parts of the song. So uh, the verses may be quite a clean sound, the, the, 
chorus then might have a distortion on it and I'll record the whole song through four or five times through the high watt and through the Ampeg B15 or with various pedals and just see if a blend of them makes any difference when I change it from section to section. Although those things aren't particularly noticeable, unless someone's listening out for them, they have a big effect on the dynamic of the song. I'll, I'll try certain things and I can only guess what the artist would like. After a while, I'll get an understanding of what they like and what they don't like, uh, what kind of vocal sound they like, whether they like the vocal being edgy, whether they like the vocal being clean. And sometimes we'll try and, and we'll, we'll uh, twist the vocal a little bit uh, to start with and see if they're happy with that and then maybe try a bit further and, and uh, see if we can just change the textures again on different parts of the song just to, ch to help the dynamic of the song and then try and build up a rapport with the artist and, and get to understand what, what he, she or they like. There's very little set routine really apart from uh, the way the session's laid out and maybe your hierarchy and your signal flow but generally even if you're mixing an album, every song will have a different snare drum sound, even if it's the same snare, even if it's the same kick drum, it depends how hard it's hit. So there are certain uh, effects that I will tend to lean towards, like reverbs, I tend to like certain types of reverbs, uh, and so I will tend to use springs for vocals, and I'll tend to use rooms for guitars. And So in that respect, uh, I have the, my kind of go-to ways of doing things, but um, I, every song is so different and, and so I don't think you can apply rules to, to things really. I mean, of vocal compressors, I generally have, I think, four different chains of analog compressors with EQs after and DSs after and we'll change, I'll try them, I'll try each one and uh, see which one I prefer. So one might have an 1176 followed by a Pultec, another one might have a, a Pi followed by a Pultec. Um, I have an ear followed by a cinema EQ um, and a DSA. So even the same vocalist uh, on different, song, different songs on the album, we might try three or four different chains and they won't always be the same chain. Depends on his delivery in the song. And we obviously have to confine ourselves because uh, we're only given a day to mix a song. It usually takes about a day and a half, but you know, I have to get these things done within budget, so I can't spend two days on one kick drum sound or reamping the vocals through 12 different amplifiers. It's, uh, you can't do that. Once the song's working, luckily with Pro Tools, you can save it and you can mess about and then revert to previous if it doesn't work out. Or you can try things in, and, and you'll try stuff and you've, you've got the song working and then you decide, right, I want the end to just be massive at the end. So you push and push and push. And then at some point you'll think, Mm, it's not, it doesn't feel right anymore, it sounds too mashed or it doesn't have the emotional attachment or I don't have the emotional attachment with it that I did have. So you'd step back a couple of mixes and then that's when you kind of start to know, okay, well this is actually as far as it's going to go. This is kind of it now and then I'll send it out, my work in progress one and I'll get comments back from the band and then they will say, they love this, this and this, don't like that, that and that. And we'll change those things and within maybe Three, two, three, four revisions, we'll get to a point where the band are happy, the label are happy, the manager's happy, the plug is happy, you know, and it, it reaches the end at that point. It's, it's generally a collective decision. It's quite rare that I will send out work in progress one and they'll go, yep, that's it. it happens occasionally, which is lovely, but not very often. Now you have to present something that's almost mastered and something that is so loud and uh, so in your face, which normally should be the domain of the mastering engineer, really. But if I send out a, a, a work in progress reference mix, generally I'll have to apply a little bit of limiting in it to get it loud enough. Because other people, otherwise, when they AB it with something else, they go, oh, it doesn't sound any good. And in fact, it's just a bit quieter. You know, so you have to be aware of those things. Also, the, you know, the bar is so high now. The bar has been set so high that records now invariably, you know, sound pretty bloody good compared to what they used to, you know, and you just, it's harder work to, to achieve those standards. Time-wise, you're, you're not given as much time as you used to be given. Albums now are recorded and mixed in a, in a fraction of what they used to take. So you've got to work smarter, you've got to work faster. It is about workflow, it is about uh, keeping the time down to, for experimentation in terms of Yes, you can experiment, but have things set up. So we'll have all sorts of signal chains and amps going into different things and we'll just try it 
and it'll all be set up and there'll be a spring going into a guitar amp coming back through a delay and then we'll just throw things at it and see if that sounds good great well then we'll use it if not don't spend time on it move on to something else try something else but if you can have things set up around you where you can try things quickly and discard them quickly then it's, it's better. Mm -hmm.